Palmer Vet with the big don't argue. Punters will love that. Download our app today and enjoy tackle busting benefits with great odds, more markets, and same game multi every NRL match at Palmer Bet. Gamble responsibly. For gambler's help, call 1 800 858 858. Okay, welcome to episode whatever. I'm the Glorious Lead Freak, and today I have a wonderful guest in the Glorious Lead Freak. How are you going? I'm going really well. Thank you for having me on your podcast. Well, it's great to have you here. So did I get did I get the intro right? You did the you did the intro very well. I was very impressed. Um, <laughs> it normally takes about four hundred or so episodes before you get it like as as good as that. So you've done well. Awesome. I'm actually Julie, and I'm interviewing Glorious League Freak. So. We know this is going to be a train wreck. We'll find out, hey? Yes. So, <coughs> there's my little man coughing, and I think that's going to set the entire tone for the entire podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's done great. <laughs> so, when did you know you wanted to be a podcaster? It was actually... In the early noughties, before podcasting, I used to do some online commentary with a few friends that I'd met online, and we used to um, call some games very loosely off the TV, and then we would chat about the game. And I used to remember that if we just recorded our chats about the game, you could put it on a website, and I reckon people would listen to it. Well, I was right about that, and that would have been podcasting. But, of course, I did nothing about it until podcasting was well established <laughs> many years later. And uh, and then eventually um, I knew I wanted to do a podcast for a long time, of course. And I saw Andrew Ferguson that everyone knows on this podcast. And he said, oh, I really should do a podcast. And I literally direct messaged him and said, let's stop fucking around and let's do a podcast. We we DM'd before and we spoken on Twitter, but never actually spoke together. And uh, we went on Skype that night and had a bit of a chat and we recorded our podcast, our first one, I think it was one or two days later. Oh, that answered my question that I was going to ask you about. So how did you get involved in this podcast with Andrew? But um, yeah. I suppose the next important question is where do you get your ideas from? Well, it comes from a lifetime of being glorious. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> See, that's a terrible question to ask. <laughs> um, oh, I, I could have said how many fingers. Yeah, that was my other suggested questions. <laughs> Just every question starts with how many fingers. Um, but, yeah, I get them. I, they, they start off. As a sparkle behind my eyes, and so they you go. See pictures in your head. I do see pictures in my head all the time. Like yeah, if so I you don't if, have Anne Fantasia. I don't have Anne Fantasia. I've heard that people that have Anne Fantasia, oh, they've got some problems. <laughs> do they? Oh, some very bad. Hey, do tell. Oh, they're very uh, device oriented. Um, hey, I've heard that they eat. Some very weird things. Uh, it's, you know, very strange people. Speaking of eating strange things, you were telling me about this delicacy that you absolutely love that's consisting of ham, cheese, and clicks. Can you please explain this? Give, me, give us your review. Okay, now, this is what you fucking eat. I don't fucking eat it, okay? All right? <laughs> You told me that you eat the worst cheese possible wrapped in <laughs> meats. <laughs> I was horrified by it. And then you just met, just casually dropped um, clicks. And I was like, excuse me, how do you spell that? And you spelt it for me. I was very disappointed when you spelled it for me. It's C-L-I-X. Because um, if you had spelled it a different way, I could have talked to you for hours. But you know, I'd never had the Arnott's clicks. No. Listeners, who do you think is telling the truth here? Someone 
like myself, who is sweet, shy, and innocent, or the glorious league freak? Listen, okay, listen, 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 okay. If I stuffed my mouth full of fucking cheese and meats, I would just tell you, all right, okay? That's all I'll say. That's all I'll say. Okay. I think we need to get into the hard-hitting questions now. Okay. So, Harry Grant or Mitch Moses, who should I choose? Well, look, I think that uh, – I think that Harry Grant has a longer career ahead of him, right? Because he's a younger dude, uh, a lot more rep football. And so I would, cho- I think you should choose to marry Harry Grant, okay? Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and then, then, because we're talking about fuck, marry, dump here, okay? Mm-hmm. Then I, I think that, so you should marry Harry Grant and then you should fuck Mitchell Moses. But just don't give him a concussion. All right. He gets concussed <laughs> a little easily these days. And like, I mean, I don't I don't want to say I've heard the rumors, but he just should be careful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for you. Mm-hmm. Fuck Mary Dump. Okay. Your choices are Mark Wahlberg. Harry Grant and Tal Malolo. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, I'm fucking Tal Malolo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, look, uh, that's a really difficult one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, Mitch Moses was the, the second one, wasn't it? No. Who was the second one? Harry Grant. Hey, there was Harry. What it was? It, Harry. Okay. Harry Damn. Grant. Mark Wahlberg and Tom Malolo. <laughs> Jeez, this is difficult. Um, okay. It's easy. No, nah, it's not easy. It's not it's, easy. Okay, I'll give you mine. Okay. You okay. Okay. My choices would be fuck Mark Wahlberg. Mm-hmm. Marry Harry Grant. Yeah. Dump Tom Malolo. Okay, I'm not. Da- I'm not dumping Tom Malolo. I, okay. I'm probably. Okay, I'm probably marrying Tamalolo because I respect him as a human being. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I tell you what, if I tell you what, if you fucked Mark Wahlberg, you'd have a story, wouldn't you? Yep. Like if if I come on the podcast and say, "Hey, guess what? I fucked Mark Wahlberg." <laughs> I think that would probably be the most listened to <laughs> podcast that we did. <laughs> so I'll probably go that way and dump Harry Green. How about that? How about Aww. how's that for an answer? Awesome. Okay. Poor, poor Harry Grant. Well, you know, you should get that fucking hairstyle under control. <laughs> I know you like his hair because it's like, you know, the words something to grab onto have been mentioned before, but I, I just can't deal with the hair. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're jealous of his hair. So, <laughs> I'm not jealous question. of his hair. It's just. <laughs> It's just, you know, as I say all the time, shave it. <laughs> okay, next question in okay. these hard-hitting questions mm-hmm. that everyone w- wants to know. Okay. <laughs> What's your favourite Mark Wahlberg movie? <laughs> <laughs> um, tell you what, there was one that you mentioned not long ago, Three Kings. I like that movie. Who uh, well, you are going to say Shooter? Man, Shooter's all right. You know, Shooter's all right. He's topless in it. Uh, yeah, you look. Mark Wahlberg doesn't give me wood. Um, I don't get a chub looking at Mark Wahlberg. You know, it's just not my thing. Jealous again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, look at him with his shirt off and think, man, why would anyone let themselves go? You know. Uh, <laughs> uh, what's uh, the worst one he's ever did was that one where they were chasing the fucking breeze. That one pissed me off, that movie. Do you, have you ever seen that one? Oh, the name's just gone out of my head. What's it called? It's called, I don't know what it's called. But anyway, it's fucking, they fucking run around in the whole movie, running away from the breeze. And I got really fucking angry watching that movie. So that's the worst one. Uh, the one that I want to see, I haven't seen, is um, the one where, where he's, he's, 
it's a fucking bodybuilding one with the rock. Have you ever seen that one? Yeah. Um. So the happening. The happening. One. That's that fucking movie. And uh, pain, and, pain and gains. The one with the rock. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen that one yet. I've heard that it's actually not too bad. Um, yeah, it's okay. It's not his best one. Okay. And I like the the other guys. That was a good one. That is awesome. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, look, I like Marky Mark's movies overall. There's one where you Four Brothers, that's home. a good one. Four Brothers Four is Brothers good. is awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you need to watch Daddy's Home and Daddy's Home 2 now. <laughs> yeah, see, they don't sound like my sort of movies. <laughs> Oh, your movies are more Boogie Nights. Oh, yeah, Boogie Nights. He's, he's awesome in Boogie Nights. And you just like it for the final scene. Well, well once, once again, I watch the final scene and be like, why is everyone impressed? I don't get it. There's something going on here I don't get. It. Like, it's just normal. <laughs> okay. So you collect high-end collectibles. Yes, I do. I do many high-end collectibles. Yeah. And you admitted off air just before that Barbie's a way superior. <laughs> I did not. I did not. <laughs> Listen, if it's there's there's I all of my closest people around me in my life, at some point turn you know on. that you actually collect Barbie dolls. No, I collect one six scale high end collectibles by Hot Toys. Okay, they are not okay. Barbies. They're not fucking Marvel Barbies. All right. The Marvel Kents? No. They're <laughs> fucking high-end collectibles, okay? <laughs> Which is your favourite Barbie? Uh, my fa- They're not Barbies, um, but my favourite one. Sorry, collectible Kents. Okay. Look, I honestly, oh, this, this is going to sound weird, but I, I mm. honestly don't have a favourite because... I just love all of them the same. They're like, um, I, I cl- they're, well, they're like my children, but if they were one six scale and didn't <laughs> shut the fuck up and I can put them in cupboards. So, um, isn't that what you do with the interns? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. See, there's a pattern here. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have a favorite. Like I've got ones that, uh, you know, I don't buy anything I don't really, really love, I guess. Um, so, yeah. So all of them, I, I just really, they're all from Star Wars and the Marvel movies and that. So they're, whenever I look at them, it sort of reminds me of things I've seen in movies and stuff that uh, really make me happy. So they make me happy. It's been a good little hobby too. It's given me something to occupy my time. That's good. Yeah. It's good to have a hobby, like, you know, going on walks and eating KFC. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, I don't so much like the movement aspect, so I try and avoid that, but I'd be all in on eating KFC. So I just replace the walking with buying high-end collectibles. <laughs> <laughs> just eat KFC <laughs> instead of get a porto. Yeah, well, until a porto, you know, start, what's it called, sponsoring. Maybe yeah, which they should. Look, they should have done. Maybe I should be talking ago. about KFC on whenever I'm on. Yeah. See who decides to give the sponsorship first. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, every day you're walking down and getting the dirty bird. Yeah, KFC is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my final question. Yes. Very hard hitting. Straight to the heart. Tell us about your favourite listener. Ooh. And why would it be me? Ooh. <laughs> it doesn't have to be me. But tell Ooh. us your favourite listener. Ooh. My favourite listener is MoFo Storm fan. <laughs> gotcha. Hey, MoFo. I gotcha. Um, no, it's, a, it's, it's cool to have so... You, you want me to tell you about you, don't you? No, I actually want to hear about who your favourite listener is. I don't I don't know that I have a favourite listener. I've got so many awesome people that I chat with that... Yeah, I it's cop out. I told you through. it was going to be hard hitting. Yeah, no, they're all... I love them just like I love all of my Hot Toys kit collection. <laughs> they're all They're all the exact same in terms of my love for all of them. Um, what makes you know? a fantastic listener? 
What may, uh, what would... makes the cut to be one of your favorite listers, I suppose? Okay. I, I tell you what I really enjoy. I really enjoy when we get feedback from people. And sometimes it's not even positive. So, like there was a guy a few weeks ago that was upset about – well, he wasn't upset, but he had a go about our tipping, and then it turned out he was a – I think he was a West Tigers fan who had uh, won money on the game, and he was just like pumped up after the game, and we all apologized, and everything was cool afterwards. But uh, just people that interact and, and you know, get involved in the podcast, like it's – one of the cool things, like whenever we record a podcast, we know it's, we're talking to a lot of people and, um, you know, we want everyone to get involved in it. And that's why we've had so many different um, guests on and people that listen and and people that have, have been suggested to us by listeners. And, um, you know, we want to give people what they want to hear. Well, we it don't... is a unique podcast. Like you yeah, have right. dips, You've got like, you know, the history episodes you've got interviews you've got the um the actual match review it's really varied you're doing a fan you and andrew are doing a fantastic job oh thanks it's, you, have, you have to be commended for it thanks we'd like we knew that we wanted to do something that you couldn't pigeonhole in a way um and we knew that we wanted to give people a podcast that you know if you if you like the match reviews, you just listen to those. Or if you just like the history episodes, you just listen to those. But we knew we wanted to do different, varied things that we thought that as many people as possible could have fun with. And we love doing those. Yeah, there's those a little bit of something for everyone. Yeah, pretty much. Like uh, I can guarantee you there's no rugby league podcast out there that has interviewed a, you know, a neurologist, a psychologist, and an erotic novelist. About, and it's all rugby league related. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing the types of guests that, like, you know, that want to come on mm -hmm. as well. Like, it's not just, like, you know, the same type. It's, yeah, varied and everyone's just got this love of league. Yeah, and, and everyone's been really keen to come on and they've been wonderful to speak with. And, like, we, one of the things that slowed us down a little bit was COVID because – um, like we, we had, we were actually going to interview, I was going to interview Mark Iyer and unfortunately, I, about like, to say Mark Warburg then. No, I was going to interview Marky Mark. Uh, and no, we were going to interview Mark Iyer and I was going to meet him in Penrith and, um, and then sort of COVID hit pretty quickly afterwards and sort of didn't go away for two years. And so one of the things I'd like to do is sort that out again, have a chat yeah. with Mark Iyer. Um, but that would like, be but, awesome. yeah, and like, uh, talking to Rugby League Week Mole, that was fucking awesome as well. He's a really nice bloke. Um, and everyone who's on your wish list? Who's on my wish list to talk to? Yeah. Uh, I like would if it was possible. If I could, I tell you what, I would like to, Mark Iyer is one of them, definitely. Yep. Um, I would like to – there's a guy that used to be involved with the Melbourne Storm. I can't remember his name. It might be Mark Evans or something. And he's been involved in rugby league and rugby union, and he kind of isn't married to either one of the sports. He's kind of a neutral in that sense. And I've seen him talk about some really interesting concepts, and I would like to talk to him. I, I'm certain I've got his name wrong, but I'd like to talk to him. Yeah, that would be a very interesting one. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to talk to uh, Dave Smith, who used to be the CEO of the NRL. I don't think he would talk to anybody in the media. I think he would decline it because he just doesn't need the the hassle. But it would be interesting to talk to him to see what it was like during his time. Yeah, that would be very, very interesting. Uh, who else? I think it would be interesting to talk to John Rebo about Super League um, and what – it was like from his perspective. And then after that, I would like to talk to a talent scout and ask them what they look for in, in younger players. And, yes, and that would be awesome. That yeah. is something that I'd, I'd really love to hear that. Yeah, I'd, I just, like, I want just different questions. Like, 
is it like when you see a good young player in the lower grades and you just are like, oh, they've got something? Or are they? do they look at the mechanics of their running style? Do they look at their, you know, their, the mechanics of the way they tackle? What is it that they key in on, you know? Yeah, and I'd love to know how they, like, you know, find their talent. Like, you know, are they are they physically, you know, going, going, I suppose, yeah, just like I said, going to a game and mm. going, oh, yeah, this is the one I'm going to go to today. Or do they actually get, like, you know, people sending them things going, hey, check out, you know, this person or. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and a I combination I, of both. Yeah, they and they get tipped off, but I tend to think that they probably get tipped off by people quite a lot. And I, the thing is, I don't know that you would be able to talk to a current ta- talent scout because I feel as though there would be a lot of what they do that they wouldn't want to talk about, in just because they don't want to give it away. Like if they feel they're really good at their job, they don't want to give away the secrets to their job. And so I feel like it would have to be retired, somebody that's retired from that. But the problem is a talent scout could do that until the fucking day they die. So, you know, yeah, how do you find... They're not well re- known. No, like, no, no. Like compared to the NFL, you know, um, you know, everyone knows who they are. Mm. Well, at least, like at least one main one from each team. Where, mm-hmm. Yeah. Here, yeah. Like, you don't hear about any names. No, you used to. You used to because it used to be like I know that Arthur Beetson was a, a very good talent scout. There was uh, there's like mainly have had a few of them that were former um, first grade players. But, uh, yeah, for the most part, you don't know who they are now. It's it's not like it used to be. And so, and so I would like to talk to a talent scout. So they're the main people I would like to um, interview and I know a lot of people say, well, why don't you interview more players? And it's honestly because I, for the most part, I'm just, I don't know. It, it's probably a weird thing with me. I'm just not interested in doing that. Unless it's Mitch Moses or Harry Grant. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be interesting to interview Jason Tamalolo, I've got to say. Um, what about Nathan Cleary? Yeah, I'd just completely ask him about Nathan Cleary. Now, I'd, I'd ask him about like some of the decisions he's made in his career because there are some unique things he's done in his career, like his 10-year deal with the Cowboys, um, you know, choosing to play for, for Tonga, just things like that. I, I think he, he'd have some interesting things you could ask him about. If you had to interview a player, like a current player, <laughs> would, your number one would be Tamalolo. Probably, probably. Um, Over Nathan Cleary. Yeah, yeah. I think. Over your boy. Of my my boy. Um, the I think another dude that I would love to interview is uh, Latrell Mitchell. I would like to talk to him about. I think he embraces being the villain. I really do, and I think there was a couple of years ago where he tried to be. He tried to be what everyone kind of was hoping he – well, not hoping, but everyone kind of wants some of these football players to be like Boy Scouts on the field. And I just think that's not him. And I think that we've seen in the last couple of years, he's just embraced being himself. And uh, uh, there's a lot of people don't like that, but I love it. I absolutely love it. And I'd like to ask him about that. I could be completely wrong, but it just seems as though when I watch him play, he's a guy that is pretty comfortable with who he is. And it's like, I watch it for that. I watch him for that. I love watching him play. Yeah, he is pretty awesome to Mm. play, uh, to watch play. Mm. Well, I suppose... We should start wrapping this up. Uh So where can we follow you on social media? Um, I do have a Twitter account. It's at League Freak, no spaces. Um, I don't tweet very much. And then I've also got an Instagram account, and that's the glorious League Freak. Uh, And if you're interested in rugby league, you will hate that. And outside of that, I, all I've got is a podcast and a website. And a Patreon? I've also got a Patreon. 
it's patreon.com forward slash league freak no spaces uh and i've got more tears on that than west tigers fans okay any last words um i'd just like to thank everybody that uh like listens to your podcast and thank you for inviting me on and i'd just like to say like uh, it's been a tough time for you recently with the loss of a lot of devices in the United States and a, a truck crash. And yeah, I just that was ho- your delivery. No, it was yours. It was definitely <laughs> yours. If I looked at the, if I looked at all of the implements on the road after that crash, they definitely look like what Julie would enjoy. And I just hope that you don't get too sad until you get your next shipments. <laughs> Oh, and we all know he's talking about himself. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm sorry to all the listeners who have listened up until this point. <laughs> Thank you for staying with us, and we'll catch you next time. Hey. Palmer bet with the big, don't argue. Punters will love that. Download our app today and enjoy tackle-busting benefits with great odds, more markets, and same-game multi every NRL match at Palmer Bet. Gamble responsibly. For gambler's help, call 1-800-858-858.